Alright, hello, how's it going? My name's Elena and welcome to my channel. I don't see a whole lot of young people, especially women, talking about finances and I think it's such an important topic to be able to become financially independent, free, and empowered. I was a business major in university and so I have a little bit of experience from that as well as just research I've done on my own. This video is really fun for me because I honestly probably put like 25 hours of research into this to make sure I'm sharing helpful information so I went to a bunch of experts, gathered tidbits from them and wanted to make it in one concise nicely packaged video to share some basic information for you. This has been a fun process for me because I've learned alongside you and I'm gonna share some of my personal experience as well. So if you have little to no knowledge about investing but you want to learn more and you wanna learn how to invest your money, then this video is for you. I'm also going to include some other great resources in the description below to learn from if you wanna dive further, which I highly recommend. I'm gonna talk through some terms for those of you that maybe don't really have any knowledge of finances or financial terminology and then kind of go through through some different steps as well as some great ways to start investing your money today. Also stay tuned for later I'm gonna be talking about stocks and that section of the video is sponsored by Robinhood which is a platform I am a big fan of coming up soon as well as talking about some other ways to invest your money. So before you considering investing you need to kind of take a look at your finances and I highly recommend trying to follow these steps. First and foremost it's very important to have an emergency fund. I talked about this in one of my other financial videos, but this is just a great rule of thumb. You never know what's gonna happen. I mean, we're literally living through a pandemic. If that doesn't show to you enough that you never know what's gonna happen and you need emergency savings in case you lose your job or something, just look at the news. Across the board, it's recommended that you at least have a month of money in your savings for an emergency and then to slowly grow that to three months to six months. The second step is to pay off debt. It's very important to eliminate debt as soon as you can because that's gonna set you back in the long term. And with any high interest rate debt, you wanna get rid of that before you start making any big investments because that's just money that's gonna keep going down the drain if you don't address it. The third is to open a retirement account. And I think I'm gonna make a whole separate video on this. Again, as I've talked about in the past, I am a passionate advocate of starting your retirement as soon as possible. I personally started mine when I was 19. I opened a Target retirement fund account through Vanguard. So basically there's different types of retirement accounts. Some of the most popular ones are 401ks and Roth IRAs. So a 401k is generally set up through your workplace. So if you're working a nine to five or some other type of job with benefits, there's a chance you have a 401k retirement account. So a 401k in itself is an account that holds investments. So if you have a 401k through your job, you're investing, you're doing great, you're preparing for your future, I'm proud of you. So a 401k is a tax advantaged retirement account where you put money in and your company is gonna most likely match to a certain percentage how much money you put in. Through this, you're automatically being invested in a mixture of stocks and bonds through mutual funds, which we will break down in just a second. There's also Roth IRA accounts, which is another retirement savings account that allows your money to grow tax free. So let's break down a little bit of those terms. So if you're unfamiliar with what stocks, bonds, the stock market is, let's talk about it. I'm gonna to try to make it as simple as possible. So a stock is an investment that represents a share in a company. So let's take Facebook, for example. You can buy a stock of Facebook, which means you basically own a little piece of Facebook's big old pie. And so as that company grows, your stock is going to grow slowly with Facebook. The stock market that you always hear people freaking out about is the marketplace for stocks and where stocks are held. So it shows all the different shares of company ownership and how they're performing overall. And the interesting thing about the stock market is that it's generally controlled by investors' emotions. So people are starting to freak out because let's say there's a pandemic, they're gonna wanna pull their money out and sell those stocks and shares. And if a bunch of people do that at once, that's gonna cause it to drop. But then as soon as they're starting to feel like, okay, you know, this is good, I'm gonna reinvest my money in the stock market, the stock market's gonna go back up. You often hear people talking about investing with risk versus reward. So you're gonna have to risk more if you want a higher reward and wanna try to get more money, but there's also lower risk investments which means you're gonna have a smaller reward profit margin, so you're gonna make less 
but you're risking less as well. So a bond is something that falls in that kind of low risk category. A bond is a contract with a company or the government where you're essentially loaning them your money. And so it's very predictable and over a long period of time with that loan, you're gonna make a little bit of money off of it. So it's considered a low risk investment. So funds is basically a whole big old bowl of stocks and bonds, etc. So I was watching a video and someone explained it. Buying a stock is like buying one single flower, but buying a fund is like buying the whole damn bouquet with all a bunch of different flowers. So there's different kinds of funds and the ones I'm gonna be talking about primarily today are index funds and mutual funds. So mutual funds came along first and like I said earlier, a fund is a big old bowl or bouquet of stocks and bonds and it's managed by an investor. So some very smart guy or girl who understands the stock market is managing a fund or a mutual fund and they, using their brain and their knowledge of the market, is selecting which stocks, bonds, etc. they think are going to be the best investments to include in the bouquet. So basically you're owning a bunch of stocks in one package so there's more diversification because if you're to invest in one stock let's say you buy a whole bunch of Facebook and Facebook just plummets all your money is gonna go down with Facebook. That's why it's very popular to hear that you need to diversify your portfolio. Basically, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Mutual funds came along for that reason, to be able to invest in stocks, but to diversify across a larger like platform. And these are run, like I said, by some smart man or woman, and they are gonna charge a big old fee, maybe like one or two percent of your mutual fund. So however much money you're putting in there, you're paying them. A little bit later along came index funds. Now I'm a big old fan of index funds, so is Warren Buffett, may I add. One of the most successful investors in the world. If you don't trust me, trust Warren Buffett. He knows what he's doing. Similarly, an index fund is a portfolio of certain investments that you can buy into, and then you own a little baby share of a whole bunch of different stocks and companies. Index is a representative sample of the stock market. So it's similar to a mutual fund, but instead of being run by some like fancy manager, it's passively managed by a formula. So instead of like a mutual fund where you're trying to beat the market, you're basically trying to match the market. So big difference is that you don't have that mutual fund manager, so you're gonna cut out a whole lot of costs. So an index fund is something that you usually invest in. You're gonna sit on for a while and not touch it. One thing to keep in mind is all index funds are mutual funds, but not all mutual funds are index funds. It's kind of confusing, I know. Basically the way this grows is through compounding interest, which is basically reinvesting your interest into your initial loan or investment. On mutual funds, there's no interest paid, but you might have dividends or capital gains reinvested to compound over time. So looking at investor.gov here, here's a compounding interest calculator to get an idea of how this would work. Let's say you put $1,000 in an index fund. Let's say you put like $100 a month. Length of time, let's say 30 years. Let's say we're gonna put it at a hopeful 8% and calculate annually. Look at this number. You originally put in just $37,000 of your own cash and because of compounding interest, it grows to $146,000 in 30 years. So imagine if you were to put in a higher number of an initial investment, more money each month, or to do an account that has a bit of a higher annual rate of return. So now you know a little bit more terms, so we can dive into some of the best ways to invest. Like I said earlier, putting money into an retirement account is a great way of investing. Highly recommend it. The sooner you start, the better. Retirement accounts, like a Roth IRA, you max out. I believe it's around $6,000 is the max you can put in a year. So let's just say you make a ton of money one year and you wanna invest a lot of it. You're a little bit limited when it comes to that retirement account. But even if you don't have that much money to put into investment, which I'm sure is quite a few of you guys, don't worry. Just put in a little bit every single month and it will pay off. So now you know, make sure you have emergency savings, pay off any big old debt that you have, invest in your retirement. Let's talk about some different ways to invest. So when it comes to investing, like I mentioned earlier, there's different approaches. You might wanna be more high risk, high reward. That could be somebody that's trading in stocks and is much more hands-on. And then there's also a more passive, a little bit lower risk approach, like investing in an index fund. So there's different types of index funds. You may have heard of like the S&P 500. That's a super popular one. So what is the S&P 500 then? 
So glad you asked. So the S&P 500 index basically tracks the top 500 US companies. If you're in a different country, it's gonna be different for you. Some of these basic principles hopefully apply to you. So there's slightly different S&P 500 funds depending on the brokerage account that you sign up with. I personally am signed up with Vanguard, which is a very popular one. The Vanguard is the originator of the index fund, but there's many other options to choose from like Charles Schwab or Fidelity. Make sure to do your own research, everything in this video, you gotta check it out for yourself. I am by no means telling you what to do. I'm here to provide information for you to further learn for yourself. So I personally have been investing with Vanguard for quite some time. They don't have the best interface. It's kind of confusing to use. They're a really good place to invest because they have very low expense ratios. So that means if I want to invest in an index fund, I only have to pay them a very small percentage, like 0.04%. So here's a story that I love that gives a little bit more credit to the S&P 500. Warren Buffett basically bet a million dollars that an index fund would outperform a collection of hedge funds over 10 years. A decade passed and he won. So all these different hedge funds trying to beat the market, trying to time it, trying to see when the stocks are gonna go up and down to make the most amount of money, they didn't win. Putting your money in an index fund and just letting it chill and slowly ride the wave of the stock market did the best. And you don't have to know a whole lot. You just put your money into one and you sit back and you don't touch it and you let it ride the wave. So the S&P 500 tracks the top 500 companies and so it lets you sprinkle your little investments across the top 500, but a total stock market fund is gonna let you sprinkle all the way to the top and the big companies, but also to little companies. So, so that is a brief overview of index funds. These come highly recommended. Any decision you make, you have to make for yourself. Put in the time and research, it's your finances. Make sure you're learning for yourself. The goal of them is not to just put money in and then take it out in six months and hope it's grown a lot. It's about put money in for years, if not decades, and letting it grow over time and then take it out when you're ready to buy a house or you're ready to retire. The best time to invest was yesterday. I kept hearing that in my research and I'm like, it's true, you gotta put that money in as soon as possible. You put the money in consistently, you don't touch it, don't even really look at it, and just let it grow. And Trying to time the market is very hard, and honestly, don't trust yourself. So it's about putting in a little bit of money each month, and I, like I said, just don't touch it. So now let's talk about stocks a little bit more and a potential for higher risk, higher reward. So you probably have heard of people talking about investing in this stock or that stock or whatever that may be and making money and being lucky because they invested in Apple at the right time or something like that. And so that's when stocks tend to come into play. They are a riskier investment, but you're able to make potentially a lot more. It's harder to do and it's gonna take time to learn, but there can be really incredible payoffs. The nice part is that stocks in general do trend upwards. There's gonna be dips and it's gonna probably rise two thirds of the time and then like drop a third of the time. So you basically gotta stick with it. So if you wanna get a little bit more specific, there are some apps that are out there that are really great that let you invest a small amount of money from anywhere. So you get a really good feel of the stock market and kind of learn what you're doing and get more comfortable with it. Like I said, index funds are great for a lot of people out there, but if you are willing to take the time and you really wanna learn, well then give individual stocks a try. So Robinhood is sponsoring this part of the video specifically, which I'm excited about. I've been a fan of their services. I've had quite a few family and friends refer me to Robinhood and I've dabbled with it a little bit to learn more about how to buy individual stocks. Of course, as with everything in this video, look it up for yourself, make your own financial decisions. So one of the best selling points that I've heard time and time again is just that the interface is so clean and easy to use and great for beginners. So the cost of certain stocks can be really intimidating, but like Amazon is close to 3,000, Tesla's close to like 1,452 which is a lot. You invest in stocks, options, ETFs, right from your phone. You're gonna earn interest on uninvested cash. There's no commission fees or account minimum. So whether you are new to investing and ready to learn, or you just want an easier interface experience, I highly recommend you check out Robinhood. I've leaved it in the description below. There's millions of users on there. And when you sign up, you get a free stock. So go to this URL and sign up to claim your free stock today. All right, so that was my basics 101, beginner's guide to investing and how to invest. If you have more, financial questions that you'd like me to make a video about, feel free to leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. That really helps me out. And this video took a lot of time and I hope this information was helpful. And as usual, thanks so much for watching. Until next time.